Let's hope it's a good one. Yes, there's a huge crowd here, as you expect, for the last of the provincial finals. Weather is perfect, a little bit of breeze coming in from the bay, and the toss has been won by Leash. They will play against uh, the breeze in the opening 35 minutes. And uh, Leash, I think, pulling a fast one on us here, don't you agree? They've brought 17 players out. I mean, OK, guys, they're a bit young, but you never can tell. They could be very fine players one day. One of them has got Higgins on his back, so I take it he may be related to Joe Higgins, who's the cornerback, of course, of Leash. But marvellous setting, really. Still a few spaces up there on Hill 16. But it's such a vast stadium nowadays, capacity around about 80,000. And uh, 60,000, well, it doesn't look quite the real thing, does it? But it's filling the whole time. The traffic uh, is, as they say, murder outside. And there's the leash captain, Ian Fitzgerald, their full forward. A dentist based in Bray and County Wicklow. Want to check on the teams? And last year they failed in the final by just two points, and today Kildare start with seven of that starting team. As you've heard, Anthony Rainbow is out, and the captain is replaced by Damien Hendy, who played last year against Dublin, while Martin Don replaces Carol Ennis. The probability is that Hendy will start at centre-half with Mick Wright, possibly switching out to the wing, and in the reshuffle, Andrew McCormack may be moved out of the corner to accommodate Dunn. That's speculation. The driving force at midfield for Kildare is provided by Killian Brennan, while Johnny Doyle, their captain today, is the main threat at half-forward, prompting and providing for the likes of Ty Fennin up front. There he is, the number 15. Well, where Leach are concerned, Nico Dwyer's first choice, 15, almost picks itself at this stage, and the selectors are perfectly happy to commence operations with the same team that saw off Dublin in the Leinster semi-final all of five weeks ago now. Fullback Colin Byrne has blossomed this year in the company of Joe Higgins and centre-half Tom Kelly. The centre-field partnership of Paul Clancy and Noel Garvin is now firmly established. This is, in fact, their 14th, or their 13th, I should say, consecutive match in tandem. The senior man of the forwards, well, that's Mick Lawler, and he's only 30. The inside forwards have switched numbers for the final, but the combination of McDonald, Fitzgerald and Delaney, as ever, looks lethal. So those are the teams, Kildare with their two changes, as expected, and Mick O'Dwyer, they tell me, is uh, today in his 40th provincial final, that is, as a manager or coach and as a player, in charge of the Leash team. Although when you see Mick nowadays, you have to do a kind of a double take. Is he in charge of Leash or is he in charge of Kildare? He had some fabulous years with Kildare, but of course, it's Porrick Nolan who has done a magnificent job in charge of Kildare. He had a spell, of course, also with uh, Offaly as manager, but back with his native county of Kildare. And what an achievement to bring them through here to this particular Leinster final. Quite a bit of experience, Kevin, here. Some of these guys from 98 and from, you know, last year as well. Yeah, loads of it, tons of it. But funny thing about it, Jerry, is look, looking into the game, I think Leash are just going to approach this so loosely and so positively. I was saying in the build-up to the game, you know, Leash are a team, new on the scene for sure, but Dwyer is so, so experienced. And he's just like, get them out there, get positive, play football and take the game to Kildare strongly.
So in the presence of Her Excellency, the President of Ireland, President Mary McAleese and the Taoiseach Bertie O'Hearn, everybody ready here for the 116th Leinster Football Final. And down in the dressing rooms beforehand, I just got a suspicion that Leash looked just a little bit more relaxed for this. Mick Lawler, a lot will be expected of this player, playing on the 40, such a good link man. And he's starting out there, and I'm just doing a quick little check around here to see who's switching positions. And uh, I've noticed that Damien Hendy is right half back. Mick Wright appears to be in the centre. No, he's gone across to the left, in fact. Left half back, so switches around the place. And uh, we'll try and make head or tail of them very shortly. And Ty Fennan has gone full forward as well, I know, Joe. Fennan in, wearing number 15, but playing right on the fringe of the square. Stuart Mackenzie Smith here trying to extricate himself from that, looking for assistance. Andrew McLaughlin. Remember, it is Kildare who are playing aided with a breeze in the first half. This is Tom Kelly. Seeking out his captain and full forward there, Ian Fitzgerald. Looking for support. Bino's around. Back towards Fitzgerald once again. An opportunity for Mick Lawler here to turn and crack in the first one. Partly blocked there by Killian Brennan. Lively start to the match, as you'd expect. Lawler again, looking for Clancy. Bad ball, comes straight instead to Patrick Murray. Outside towards Killian Brennan. Through, through the centre to Stuart McKenzie-Smith. Bad ball, cut out by Kevin Fitzpatrick. Now Darren Rooney. Again, he picks out the man here who's always available. Free very quickly taken. Ross Bonnelly. Trying to play it back there towards Bina McDonald from whence it came. Michael Lawler. Good ball in, intended there for Gary Kavanagh. Useful scorer, Gary Kavanagh. He's in the clear. And he fists it high and over. First attack produces the first point of the match in this final. And it's Gary Kavanagh from Strad Valley who gets it. Playing today in his ninth championship match. A lot of the time he's come off the bench as a sub, but he starts today and he's started very positively. Fisted down there by Darren Rooney. Cut out here by Tom Kelly, the St. Joseph's man. Into the middle here towards Noel Garvin, he's clocked. Killian Brennan, the guilty party. Useful ball down. Killian Brennan has been ticked for that. That's the infrastructure hitting that one over. So a very good start for Leash, and that's two points they lead by. This is where the team captain, Ian Fitzgerald, just got loose, got good possession, took his chance. And the referee has come across to talk to one of his linesmen. Something that was happening out there, brought to his attention by David Coldrick, also from Meath. So I just wonder what the uh, referee saw. He's calling across Porrick Clancy and also Alan Barry from Sarsfields in Kildare. Well, the notebook out, and there's a couple of yellow cards. And the two number eights get reported. Porrick Clancy has got that absolutely fabulous point at the end of the semi-final victory against Dublin. Here's Killian Brennan, that was all five weeks ago. Nicely cut out here. Joe Higgins setting them off once again, going down under the weight of the challenges, Tom Kelly. And Alan Barry has got a red card and he's off. A second offence and he's off after three minutes and 42 seconds. Kildare, badly struck by injuries to begin with, having lost Rainbow Dermot early as well. Carol Ennis and now sent off is Alan Barry. He had just got the yellow card along with Boric Clancy and the very next ball that comes down, he commits the foul. Watch Tom Kelly turning into it here. 
and the referee decides that that is a challenge deemed worthy of a second yellow. I can yeah. only assume that was his action. It didn't look terribly nasty to me. No, that was very innocuous, I thought, Joe. That's very, very harsh. I didn't see the first yellow, of course, was off the ball. We didn't see what that was. No. But that second yellow was very harsh. He was just reaching in to try and get the ball that time, and I'm not even sure it deserved a yellow. I saw the referee go straight for the red. It looked like a direct red, in fact. So it wasn't a second yellow. Controversy right at the very beginning of the match. Bending his back here is Colin Byrne. He's uh, trapped down there by Derek McCormack, and it's going to be Leash possession. Leash leading in the match by two points to nil. It's 15 against 14, and a huge chunk of the game to go. Seamus McCormack from the Walterstown Club in County Meath making the call. It's a big one, a very big one. Bino MacDonald dropping it down. There's support. Coming again, looking for another one here is Ross Mullally, and he's put it over the bar. The 19-year-old student at Maynooth College. Great kick, what a start by Leash. What a body blow for Kildare. That is a great strike. And the man who's marking him in this match is Mick Ryder, switched across from the centre. Andrew McLaughlin, by the way, is playing centre-half back for Kildare. They're absolutely rattled by this electrifying start, by the controversy as well. They need scores, and Stuart McKenzie Smith has a chance. He's fluffed it, but it touched a back, went off Kevin Fitzpatrick. It's a 45. This is McKenzie Smith. Great block down that time by Kevin Fitzpatrick. His timing was excellent. Well, that will be a real talking point, the sending off of Alan Barry, the fact that Kildare down to 14. They need something here from Patrick Murray, from Moorfield, county champions in Kildare last year. Oh, it needed to be on target. He was kicking with the breeze, but it's blowing, if anything, across over his left shoulder towards the right corner. This is once again here the. Well, Jerry, what's going on? This is young Cabinet coming in with the play. He must put this over with his closed fist, and in this instance, he's not. He's got an open hand. He's he's just popping it over. They're free outs. Well spotted. <laughs> Killian Brennan held in possession. The on tight Fennan that time. Joe Higgins is marking him. And after that start where Fennan went into full forward, Stuart McKenzie Smith has switched back again. Going to see how Leash used the extra man, Tom Kelly. Nicely collected in his stride here by Gary Cavanagh, point scorer already. Turned back there once again towards Bino McDonald, and that's over. Brian Bino McDonald. So three different, sorry, four different scorers so far for Leash. An explosive start, and they lead by four points to no score. Well, they're absolutely flying now, Jared. This they, are, they really are on fire. And Gildir, the shock of the sending off, they just haven't settled. They're all over the shop. And the Murphy from Leak Slip is the Kildare goalkeeper. Very good shot stopper. Belt to the head into space towards Ty Fennett, cut out by Joe Higgins. Going back to collect this poor Clancy. Again, it's Tom Kelly coming forward. They have to stop his adventurous runs. He can be so influential. Darren Rooney from the half-back line. Broken down by Ian Fitzgerald, being marked in there. And uh, the man who is marking him is David Lyons from Clain. But it's a terrible start for the Lily Whites. Attention required, and it looks to be Brian Bino MacDonald. Great nickname, Bino, but I'm just thinking you, Kevin, would have played in the days of uh, Podrick, Dandy, uh, Kelly from Galway. God help us if Galway had been playing uh, Leash, we'd have had the Dandy <laughs> playing the Bino. I don't think I could have taken that one. And two characters indeed. You know, this guy was playing in the three minor teams that were involved in All-Ireland Finals in 96, 97, 98. And in 98, they were beaten by Tyrone. A lot of the Tyrone team we've seen already in the programme today won Leinster medals. 
a one that rather that won Ulster medals today, but All Ireland medals back five years ago. It'll be curious if those two teams win their respective provinces this evening. Ronan Sweeney will drift into midfield, but that ball is drifting well away from Joe Higgins and uh, the best intentions of Stuart McKenzie Smith. Just about keeping it in for a second, but it's going to be a line ball instead of a kick out. Higgins. Garvin was going towards it. One by Killian Brennan. What breezy up here. Out of play. Well, one of the great success stories this year has to be the fact that Porik Nolan has brought this Kildare team through to uh, a Leinster final because at the start of the championship, people did not know what to expect. They were in transition very much. Well, they may have got here a little bit earlier than they had planned, but now that they're here, they really need to shake themselves here and get back into this game, or it's going to be behind them by the time we get to the half-time. Nicko with a smile on his face, and his team attacking again with the infantry setting it up here for Ross Monnelly. Monnelly going through, they mean business here, Leash. It's a long time since 1946, that's gone wide off the boot of Mick Lawler, the emo player. First played championship, Lawler, ten years ago against Loud, and Leash won that day by three points. Murphy with the kick out. Corey Clancy, no clean catching in midfield so far. And while the game is still at the settling down period, it's interesting that Leash have just gone four points in front. No settling down for them. Ian Fitzgerald, lovely turn. Bad finish. Real sold dummies that time to David Lyons, but uh, couldn't complete the action. With a shot on target, never troubled Murphy. He could have carried that one on, Ger, actually. He sold the dummy, lovely. He was clean in and goal. Ian Fitzgerald's fourth time to be facing Kildare in the... Leinster Championship. Kildare just having difficulty getting the ball out of their own half of the field. Ronan Sweeney kicking it ahead. Mackenzie Smith. They look once again to Ty Finnan. Can he get them motoring? They need a score just to settle. The game needs a Kildare score. Torrey Clancy has it instead. Very steady player. Towards Fitzgerald, that's a great ball, good catch, nice layoff. McDonald coming in and Vino has done it again. It's a great display by Leash in this Leinster final. They won the title on five occasions, but it's been 57 years since they last held the cup. Interesting that Leash have left their number five, Darren Rooney, be the free, the free player. So look for him. Here he is coming in with the challenge. Didn't make it. Kildare building in measured fashion with Ronan Sweeney. Trying to cut through the defence now. Leash getting players back. Good grouping. Johnny Doyle, the captain for the day. Bad, bad finish. Huge disappointment for the Kildare fans. And the kick-out taken quickly. Really, they're going to stretch Kildare as much as they can. And that was Russ Momley doing a lot of hard work. Bino McDonald running into challenge. Mick Wright trying to deflect it away from him. Maybe it's with Mick Lawler instead. Useful ball inside, and then there was a foot block by Noel Garvin. It's going to be a free to Kildare. Quickly taken. Patrick Murray... Fennan getting inside, Joe Higgins cover, Tyke Fennan, they need a goal, Higgins does well, but Fennan has it again, and he's put it wide, an explosive shot at the end of it, he had a goal chance, he was going for it. That was a terrific chance here, Jerry does all the right things, almost dispossessed, turns back onto his favourite left, this has to be a goal, and he just flashes it, wide of the post. Again, the referee has been called aside by the linesman, something that he may have spotted or not spotted, but there's an injury in any case down the field, and it's Martin Dunn, the number 18, who came in for Carol Ennis, Dunn from the Sarsfields club, and the referee. 
is deciding that uh, there has to be a blood substitution. And it's Noel Garvin, the dietitian in midfield from the St. Joseph's Club, who's going off for treatment. And coming in in his stead will be Donald Miller. Might just have a look at the injury as Garvin was going through. That's where he was in a collision with Martin Dunn. Dunn, incidentally, one of those players to make his championship debut in the Leinster final itself. And uh, looking at the records in recent times, John O'Leary made his debut for Dublin as a goalkeeper in 1980 in the Leinster final. And more recently still, in 1996, Kieran Whelan made his debut, scored two points in the Leinster final that day. Meanwhile, Stuart McKenzie-Smith, in his Leinster final debut, has put it over. It's taken 15 minutes. Kildare get a point. They're only four behind, chasing the game from the very outset. 14 men, Kildare, finally get some comfort and something to build on. Fergal Byron, Gillian Brennan going back, pursued the whole time there by the blood substitute, Donald Miller. Picked up here by Andrew McLaughlin. Nice running ahead by Derek McCormack, trying to skin his man in there, who is Aidan Fennelly. McCormack giving it everything. Fennan has come near to him, picks it up here, Tyke Fennan. 14 metres out, upward angle, and they look and they consult, and the umpires in the end decide it has gone wide. It's a fourth wide for Kildare. Frustration for Tyke Fennan, especially that goal chance earlier on. Darren Rooney, the goalkeeper, straight away looked for the free man, noticed that Rooney was that player, but then the foul was committed, and Kildare are going to have to do a fair bit of chasing around the place. And Byron is good enough, Jared, to get his kickouts to the free man, he's caught him a few times now with it, big advantage. Back there is Martin Dunn under pressure, the entire defence is under pressure. Oh, that clever kick in the end, just failing to produce anything. Again, it's Ian Bino MacDonald. Brian is on the bird set, but uh, a young man who has been very familiar to football fans around the country and beyond in recent years for his sheer excellence. Killian Brennan is still patrolling midfield there. Just wonder if they're going to freshen things up a little bit, uh, Kildare. But they're missing so many key players, it's a really tough order for them. Big task. Mick Lawler. Down again. It goes into the full forward, Ian Fitzgerald. Wonderful footballer, Fitzgerald. Lovely turn. This is the stage in which to do it. And he's doing it. The captain leading by example. He's got two points, same as Bino. And the others getting the scores, the wing forwards, Russ Monnelly and Gary Cavada. He's really giving uh, the number 18, Martin Dunn, a torrid time there, Jerry. He's winning every ball out in front, setting it up, and now he's got two from play himself. David Lyons right now is being marked by Damien Delaney. I'll put it the other way around if you want to. Tyke Fennett chasing here, skipping it ahead. He was fouled by Kevin Fitzpatrick. And the referee might call Fitzpatrick across just to have a little word or two about that. The notebook is out. It's a yellow, I'd say, Jerry. It can't be any more than that. He, he was late, there's no, no question about it. And he has hurt him. He might be under a little bit of pressure now, the referee. Well, this is the difficulty, because I know Seamus McCormack will have made the other decision after three minutes and 42 seconds regarding Alan Barry. Uh, in all sincerity and honesty, it's what he saw... And it's another oh. red! Well, Jarnot, this is the pressure I was talking to you about. He had already sent off Barry. I couldn't for the life of me see how that's a red card offence. Well, uh, whatever about the other one, whether the referee saw it clearly or not, and I don't know. That time the referee had a very good view of it, and quite yeah. honestly, that is no, not a sending that's, off offence. Now, bear in mind, in the last sending off, chair was a straight red as well. So, I mean, these are very interesting decisions. If we're reaching the stage now where it's one red for another, we're just levelling up the match at 14 each, this is becoming a farce. Yeah, you could make an argument, Chris. 
It's 6-1. Alicia winning. Kildare of a free. Patrick Moore will take it. Or Patrick uh, Murray, I should say, will take it. It will suit the, le the left-footed kicker. Well, it should have, but he has fluffed it. Bad miss. So, Glenn Ryan is the reason for the big cheer. His introduction onto the grand stage itself, and it's his 36th time to play in the championship for Kildare. On in place of Martin Dunn, who was never quite up with the pace of this. Well, they've made the decision, they had to do something with Fitzpatrick, they've made it. Johnny Doyle into the corner towards Derek McCormack. Well, no excuses now about numerical disadvantage or superiority or whatever. It's 14 each. Please all around, Aidan Fennelly there protesting. Fennelly's number is noted by the referee, Seamus McCormack from Meath. This is it again here. Holding up the man. Well, I think in that instance, the referee is perfectly right to tick him. That's just wide. John Doyle. Kildare's captain in the absence of Anthony Rainbow. Porrick Nolan then pacing up and down the sideline with his selectors there. Making any other tough decisions they have to make. Victory is what it's all about in this 116th Leinster football final. Patrick Murray. Neat turn inside. Well collected, well gathered, good penetrating run going by Lawler, blocked down in the end. It's Joe Higgins who got in there. Higgins available again, but he doesn't need him this time. Instead, it's the free man, Darren Rooney. That'll be well, it was the free man a little while ago, no longer. Got to catch up with these sendings off. Inside towards Ian Fitzgerald. Once again, Bino MacDonald. Fitzgerald kicking well, looking confident, great accuracy. That's three points now for Ian Fitzgerald, and Leash lead by seven points to one. And he's got three points from four kicks on the target. You can't ask for better from your full forward. Terrific point again there, Gerald. Like he's, he's going so well now. He's leading the team really from the front. And a good footballer. He's really shown it on the big stage now. We always knew there was a great stop at Ian Fitzgerald, but there were days when he fell well below his high standards. Kicked in by Glenn Ryan that time. Then operating around the middle of the field. Sure, he'll drift back into the half back line pretty quickly as Andrew McLaughlin goes, bends the back. Has support there, Mick Wright available. Ronan Sweeney playing it forward to Killian Brennan. The big man, Stuart Mackenzie Smith, trying to give some direction to the forward line. Opening it up here with Derek McCormack. Final kick is by Johnny Doyle, and that is wide. Too wide of the target now by Doyle. Kildare with just one point to show for 23 minutes of action, and that is seven wides in all. That's hurting them, Jer. Now they're good chances. John Doyle should have popped that one over, and they need a few scores come up to half time. They're bad, bad wides. Well, you can't blame the injuries that they've been stricken with for the wides they're kicking. It's just down to bad play. Ryan, bad ball. And again, Leash have the opportunity to build, do so successfully with Tom Kelly setting it away here with Ross Monolly. Kelly continues his run forward. Mick Wright is in with the intervention. The referee says foul committed. Free kick. Again, the referee is busy ticking the name of Mick Wright from Selbridge, his dad, of course, won an All Ireland medal with Offaly back in 1972. So Damien Delaney from Strand Valley, opportunity to get into the scoring act himself. 
back this year, having missed the last two seasons. Another player with a wonderful talent. Doesn't quite demonstrate it there. Kicking just uh, looking a little rusty. Funnily yes. enough, Jerry, you would have imagined uh, if Leash were going moving pretty up front that Delaney would be part of it. He just hasn't got not a lot of ball has come into him. It just is pretty quiet so far. He hasn't touched the ball. That was the first time, but not in general play. Killian Brennan. They need a big performance from him, and Ronan Sweeney has drifted back into midfield. That's not unexpected. Towards the big man, Stuart Mackenzie Smith, taking his man, who has Colin Byrne out of position. Great play, nicely done here by Aidan Fennelly, who switched across onto Derek McCormack. They get it out as far as Ross Monnelly. Good ball carrier, but Glenn Ryan has an easy one here. And Kildare with plenty of time in which to build something up with Damien Hendy setting him going. And the referee has spotted a player on his hands and knees inside. And he may have a word there with Aidan Fennelly for that. In fact, he's calling him across. The player who was down was Derek McCormack of uh, Kildare. And Fennelly has already been ticked. Yeah, it looked like the... holding, holding off the ball, Jared looked off the, the distance. He's given him a yellow, yeah? Yeah, because he was ticked earlier on out by the far sideline. Free in front of the post this time. Chance for Patrick Murray to kick this one. Murray playing in his eighth championship match. He's got seven points for the season so far, and he's now got his eighth. It's what you expect from the free taker from just about 24 metres out. He's made it seven points to two. But the greater movement and cohesiveness and... Uh, the more likely winners at this very, very early stage look to be Leash. Kildare need to get a decent run of possession. Instead, it is Noel Garvin setting something up inside. Runs all the way through to Ender Murphy. Goalkeeper from Leak Slip. Picking up Johnny Doyle. Has support here with Ronan Sweeney. This is better from Kildare. Good running across here by Tyg Fennan. Well out from goal. Higgins is nearest to him. Fennan going this way and that. He's missed a goal in a point so far, left to score. Now he's found a gap, staying on his feet. Ooh, turned it back somehow towards Sweeney. And McCormick's final shot easy in the end for Fergal Byron to collapse on and to clear to Colin Byrne. Real hint of danger there for the Leash defence, but they coped well. And uh, Kildare's attack in that last instance just did not look convincing. Here's Killian Brennan holding it up. Should go for it. And again, he didn't look confident at all. He was kind of waiting for the others, the forwards, the natural kickers, to score. There was nobody coming for it, but this was the last attack. That was the block down. And really, it was going nowhere. Nico Dwyer, intensive mood. What a record this man has had down the years as a player and as a manager. Nicely collected in here by Mick Lawler. Playing just in front of his own half-back line. Runs out here towards David Lyons, the man from Clane. Young player playing in just his third championship match. Tracking him back the whole time there was Delaney. Taken up well by McCormack. Mackenzie Smith. Lions back again here, almost touched it on the ground, it breaks down, and it's picked off the ground. Just look at it again here. Wow. Absolutely, blatantly taken off the ground. Good spot by the referee. So the free in for Johnny Doyle to take, it'll suit a right-footed player. Have they missed a couple of chances? He needs to get his confidence going. Great player in all that he is, and an experienced campaigner. And the leash player is very close to that feeder. Doesn't put Johnny Doyle off. Getting the target and finding the range perfectly here to put it over. It's his first pointed free. 
So just four between them. Kildare have had lots and lots of chances. But something is missing, an element of leadership. Well, they'll be pleased that they're, uh, you know, biting back into that lead. It's going to be fairly reasonable, it appears, at half-time. And the big thing is they're 14 men against 14 now. The parity on, 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 in, in terms of personnel. I've just seen Mick O'Dwyer down below prepare Colin Parkinson to come in. He hasn't played much in recent times. <laughs> Meanwhile, Aidan Fenley taking it out, going down on the way to the challenge there was Tory Clancy, Mick Lawler, steady across towards Brian McDonald. Bino cutting loose once again, expecting the challenge to come in, not with any great deal of effectiveness. Released outside here towards Tom Kelly. Out into the corner here, Kamara kicking, and kicking inaccurately. Having to be content with just the point he scored earlier on in the match that uh, helped set Leash on their way. Still four between them. Two controversial sendings off, two of the talking points for the first half. Ross Monnelly here, waiting, expecting the breaks to come his way. Oof, it just about reached Tom Kelly in the clear, and he kicks it over. Monnelly went down injured after that, but Kelly carried on with the action and floated it between the posts. Kelly doesn't score all that terribly often for Leash, but he's made it 8-3 here. He was the Vodafone player of the month for June. And the referee is speaking with Mick Wright, who may have got a late challenge in on Ross Monnelly, and it's a yellow card for Mick Wright. So to date, we've had uh, sendings off and we've had yellow cards as well. And we'll give you the full check on all of that just after the half-time break. Yeah, and when he got a bad bang there when he popped that ball to Tom Kelly on the run, the one that just made it over uh, Glenn Ryan's head. And uh, Mick Wright came in a bit late, and you're wide open when you give those sort of passes, and that one, as they say, he stayed hit. Well, the referee has been indicating to the third official just how many extra minutes might be played. Haven't seen it just yet. But confirmation of the latest card. Mick, who is playing at left half-back, for Kildare. And Monolly giving a big, big cheer. He's back once again, but this is what happened to him. Right of the picture there. Clash between Wright and Monolly. Didn't look that terribly serious, but he got a yellow card. Three extra minutes to be played at the end of the first 35. So about five minutes of play still to go before we head for the break. Stuart Mackenzie Smith. Again, taking on Colin Byrne. Trying to knock this one over. It's a good kick. That's the second point for the full forward. He'll be very, very pleased with that. It continues to keep Kildare nicely in touch without playing terribly well. He's having lots of, lots of advantage on Colin Berger. I'm say he's got a lot of possession. He's now got two smashing points from play as well. He's given it he's given it plenty. There were times in the championship so far when he looked to my eyes at least a little less than convincing and less than certain of himself at full forward, but he's enjoying it this afternoon. Well Garvin wake, walking away from the action. As again. Brennan takes the free. He has it again, you say. Right. And here comes Murray. Patrick Murray going down, scythed. And uh, Colin Byrne was one of those involved. And the referee indicating that it's going to be a free in, and uh, a little ticking for Colin Byrne after that. So it means that Johnny Doyle can come out to kick this and put just three between them. And although they've been second best so far, they will feel they're in with a right chance of taking the Leinster Cup. Trophy doesn't have a name, by the way. He's got it nicely. And it's 8-5. Strange game, this football. I'm sure Mick O'Dwyer will be raging over this situation. We're, we're back now with the Munley uh, move earlier on. This is where Mick Wright comes in. He certainly takes him out. He, he changed his uh, movement to take him. And a very deserved yellow card. 
Well, the scoring chances are interesting, and there's not much between them. Kildare made 15 scoring chances so far, Leash 13, and it's 8-5 on the score. Fergal Byron in his 21st championship match, kicking this one beyond Ronan Sweeney. Back there is Damien Hendy. And again, Leash stand firm at the back. Porrick Clancy released inside here. Nice movement involving Gary Cavada, ready to take on his man. Player going down there was Damien Hendy. And a Leash player involved as well. Ross Monnelly, once again in the wars. And the referee busy. And the number 17 of Kildare, noted by referee Seamus McCormack. He certainly is in the wars, Ross, he's taking a lot of punishment, but nothing malicious there, Ger. that's just, you know, the passion of the championship, fellas going for the ball, and these things happen. So all these frees now, desperately important. Liquid Noir can't look just now as he makes his way back towards the other selectors. It'll be Damien Delaney, missed one earlier on. Needs this one to put four between them. Light breeze blowing into his face. And again, it's gone well to the right. Killian Brennan is in there, but there's some holding, and the referee says free out to the Lily Whites. So not having a good afternoon so far, Damien Delaney, not involved in the open play, and the free's not working for him. Brian Lacey. Well, his fellow defenders have had a busy time, but Lacey is one of those great experienced campaigners. Killian Brennan. Um, down into the corner here towards Ty Fennan. Nice pass across towards Patrick Murray. Murray going for it himself. Neat turn. Second point for Patrick Murray. The first from play. Kildare going stride for stride with Leash. And there's now only two points in it. We might have said that Leash looked like winners, but there's an awful long way to go in this Leinster final. Kildare showing character and determination. They've shown that in abundance this season so far in the championship. So about another two minutes to go in added time in this Bank of Ireland Leinster football final coming to you live from Croke Park. Stuart Mackenzie Smith again causing problems for Colin Byrne. Fed across invitingly here for Tyke Fennin to try and steal a march on the defence. Comes back to Ronan Sweeney. Knew from the moment it left his boot, it was going nowhere near the posts. Fergal Byron here, who was one of the support workers during the Special Olympics a couple of weeks back, so he's back in Croke Park, this time doing what he really does well, keeping goal for the Leash footballers. Again, a roar of approval from the fans as Ross Monnelly very willingly takes it on, but again he's fouled, and he limps away from this one. And his marker, Mick Wright, is going to have to be careful. The referees had a little word with him, and I think might have reminded him that he was ticked. He was yellow carded. No action taken here, but the message is very clear. Any more of that, and you could be seeing out the rest of the match from the sideline. Yeah, certainly, he's on the limit to her. He has to be so careful, and really, that's a, a situation Munley is going to exploit now. They're running at him the whole time, even though he, he seems to have a dirty little calf injury now at the moment. Well, the physio for Kildare, who is Eamon Amurahertig, son of Michal, is out there attending to Killian Brennan. Killian's OK. Doesn't score an awful lot, Killian Brennan. Got a gold, mind you, against uh, Meath in a uh, Leinster semi-final two years back. And had a scoring chance earlier in this game. So third time lucky, perhaps, for Damien Delaney. Only two points between the teams, which itself is very, very surprising. That's the 45-meter line, so he's just inside it. 
Can he curl it this time? On target. His confidence is ebbing away. He's missed three now in this first half. It's not working for him. And it's half time. Only two points in it. A dramatic first half in many respects. Ian Fitzgerald, three points from play. The leash captain will be hoping to get his hands on that Leinster Cup. The other number 14, Stuart Mackenzie Smith, got two himself for Kildare. Kildare are still very much in it. Both sides down to 14, sendings off during the first half for Alan Barry of Kildare and Kevin Fitzpatrick of Leash. Many talking points, but only two in it. Leash, eight points. Kildare, six. Yes, he's got his Australian rules type jersey on him, as you can see. Hint, hint. I'm sure he's thinking in terms of Australia in uh, October right now. He's thinking about this second half of the Leinster final, 32nd meeting ever between Leash and Kildare in the championship. Remember in 1946, if you were around, it ended Leash 11 points, Kildare won six. And they also met in finals in 36 and 38. That is Ronan Sweeney. Second half underway, two between them. It's Leash eight points, Kildare six. And Colin Parkinson is up. But meanwhile, coming through is Peter McDonald. Ten seconds of the second half gone. What a start. They blitzed Kildare at the start of the first half. They're following suit at the beginning of the second 35. What a ball inside here to Vino. Kept his eyes on it all the way. Never broke stride and belted it in. That's a wonderful goal by Vino. His fourth ever match in championship football. What a beginning. Here comes the captain, Ian Fitzgerald. And Brian Lacey was the man who was going in. Brian Lacey foul. What about that? Well, it was a magne magnificent finisher. As you said, didn't break strike, kept his eye on it. He could have been cleaned by the goalie if he left his line. And what a finish. Absolutely magnificent. We always knew he was a wonderful talent, and it's great that he's able to come here when the pressure is on and produce the acid test. It's a big test now of Kildare, but they've got a free kick. Referee Seamus McCormack from Meath making his way up here. Close to the action. So it gives John Doyle from Allenwood a chance to add to the two points he contributed in the first half. Another real body blow for Kildare, but they've shown us character in the past and they're going to have to do something similar if they're to rescue their Leinster Championship ambitions. This has to go over. Pressure kick. He deals with it well. It's his third point. Three pointed freeze then for John Doyle. One eight to seven points. Four between them. It's not it's a mountain, but it's not a huge one. But what about this for a pass? And what about that oh. for a finish? One of the great goals of this championship. It's superb. After you could watch that goal all day. The way he kept his eye on it and just straight into this into the side that in great goal Bino playing in his 15th championship match in the leash colors what a player for Clancy trying to dominate the exchanges at midfield a lot of the ball has been passing by midfield with the half forwards and half backs making it a very congested area that's Derek McCormack there from the Valley Kelly club bit of holding down there Joe Higgins Getting away with it, Ty Fennan doing the protesting, getting nothing for his efforts, a wry smile at the referee. And Joe Higgins, not quite sure whether he's telling his colleagues to play for the, the greatness and the pride of the jersey, or whether or not he was saying that he was being held by the jersey by Fennan. But now it is Leash who have the breeze behind them, slight breeze. Derek McCormack again, businesslike, two leash men on him. Gets it into 
Stuart McKenzie Smith had such a good first half. This time he's bundled over. This time the referee awards the free kick against Colin Byrne. Byrne from Port Leisha. McKenzie Smith down on the deck still. Don't think there's anything there uh, on towards her. Just a hard tackle. Uh, I think he should be okay. Well, they say that the pitch surface is very, very hard. Now, unless he took a nasty tumble, we can look at it again here and try and second guess, but that's all we can do. Holding off his man. I didn't see anywhere where he could seriously have hurt himself. All the material, it gives the free kick to Kildare and John Doyle. A couple of players going short for it. It's going left. Another chance gone a begging. Now putting the ball wide on your own side from freeze is one thing John Doyle doesn't need to be doing early in the second half. At least keep it in play if he's not going to make it. One of the stats in the first half there, Colin, that we showed at half time was the number of frees each side was uh, awarded. And in Kildare's case, it was something of the order of 16. Yeah. Pretty Which open means game. They should got to be very disciplined. If they uh, don't throw it away in front of their own post and give John Doyle a chance to add to the three he's got so far. Aiden Fennelly against McCormack. He was bending down, ball handled on the ground, and it's going to be a free in. A lot of the play now going in the direction of Fergal Byram's goal. It looked like a hard call there. I thought there was a bit of a bounce in that ball. Well, that's what he's claiming. Here we go now. Now, the referee, I think, got it right, right. just on yeah. viewing it a second time. And he didn't even have the video replay, Jerry, still got it. That's true. So it gives Patrick Murray a chance to take over the free-taking responsibilities, to hit it left, round the corner, 13 metres out. Needs to be on, and it is on target. Good kick. The fighting spirit of Kildare in evidence. A horrible blow at the beginning of the second half. That brilliant goal by MacDonald. A horrible start to the match as well, but they've dragged themselves by the bootlaces back into it in a meaningful way. Just the goal in it. Six minutes of the second half gone. Killian Brennan breaks it down, but to the incoming Gary Kavanagh. And Kavanagh with a very wayward kick indeed. He had a bit more time, but he just hit the explosive shot. And straight away goes back to pick up his man. And a Murphy's kick out. Barry Brennan is being prepared to come in. And he's going to come in in place of Darren Rooney, it seems. Or is that the case? No, it's it's not. It's Gary Cavada who's going to come off. Change of players, so Cavada comes off. But the important thing is that Barry Brennan from Greg Cullen has come into the Leash team. So they've made a couple of changes now. Start of the second half. Broken down here by Noel Garvin. That comes straight to Glenn Ryan. Spreads it out towards Patrick Murray, attracting the attention of Darren Rooney. Killian Brennan moving forward. Lovely take by Murray on his left boot. Oh, it was perfectly set up for him. He wasn't showing too much concern about the players near him from the opposition. Looked to be composed, but he hit it well away to the left. And Jared, a player Smith at work will be having a look at, you have to say, is the leash midfield. Uh, Clancy and Garvin have totally Hasn't underperformed, and Killian Brennan is really holding his own for Kildare there. That's given them a strong position to make another comeback from. And with a player like Glenn Ryan down there, the great warrior that he is, to urge his men on, they'll feel that if they're only a couple of points behind with, uh, let's say, five, ten minutes to go, they'll have a real good chance. That's Brennan. Down he went near the sideline. Possession taken by... Bino MacDonald inside to his captain, Ian Fitzgerald, bad finish. Well, after a wonderful start to the second half by Leash, they've kicked a couple of bad ones. Old failings 
that were here for the league final against Tyrone, remember, at the beginning of May and were hopelessly out of sorts on the day. And it was a very comprehensive and convincing win for the team that are now the Ulster champions as of this afternoon. Barry Brennan hoping that his side will be the Leinster champions at the end of play. Noel Garvin dispatching it in towards McDonald! It got a touch from the goalkeeper who came out to meet it. Nobody was quite sure what was happening there. But had it got the necessary little flick from Bino McDonald, that would have been his second for the day. Instead, it's a 45. Yes, the goalkeeper got the touch on it, chair on the bounce on the way up. But if Bino, as you say, got the touch, that was in the net for sure. So a second 45 of the day, the first for Leash. Mick Lawler fancying his chances for Mick O'Dwyer's team, his first year in charge of this squad. As we said when we were in introducing the whole item back around 2 o'clock today, one of the things that appealed to Mick O'Dwyer was the quality of the Leash forwards. Lawler hasn't scored so far, he's not going to score here either. Again, they look to the danger man inside, and this time he can't produce the goods. Disappointment for Bino. And for the many, many fans who've come here, a crowd of 61,786, and they were telling me during the week that Kildare alone expected to have round about 35,000 here, and the rest to come from Leash. Glenn Ryan holds on to it well. The old fox getting it out to Killian Brennan. Motoring once again, with Sweeney involved. Down towards the target man, Stuart Mackenzie Smith, that run away from the danger zone, comes out towards Boric Clancy. Oh, missed there by Mackenzie Smith, made a good but despairing dive to try and get that one. And it's belted clear out of danger by Derek Rooney. Back down to Peter McDonald. McDonald, two against three. It's the McDonald has a loose one outside. Chance to finish it off here. What an explosive goal, and it's Ross Mullaney. Two and a half minutes into the second half. A second goal for Aish. A first for Ross Mullaney. Two wonderful attacks. Oh, Jerry, Two look at that wonderful pass. finishes. Magnificent. Great finish. Peter McDonald involved again, selflessly spreading it out to Mullaney, the number 10, and he whips it in beyond the cover. And Ender Murphy is beaten twice, and it's 2 8 to 10 to 8 to 8 points. It really is now all up to Kildare. Huge task demanded of them, but uh, that is Patrick Murray kicking, but kicking it wide. And this is all about McDonald here, Jared. You see, he moves inside, he could take the point, but he sniffs the goal chance, a real forward, gets it to Munley, and that's a great finish. And this game has really now been put up to them. An injury to Joe Higgins. A knee injury. Kadera thinking about making a change, but first of all, the centre of attention here is Joe Higgins. Higgins has also uh, been a very fine boxer during his sporting career. Concentrating now on football, that is Podrick Brennan. And he may be coming on for uh, Derek McCormack, we believe. Number 13 being held up by the fourth official. So that is the change. Porrick Brennan from the Sarsfields club, former county champions in Kildare. And he's coming into the attack, looking like he's going in as a straight swap at top of the right. Higgins would be a very big loss. He's a tidy back, also played at centre half at one stage. He's a tough man, he's not going to go off. He wants to stay on. The physio has done his uh, job in there. That's Aidan McFall. Virgil Byron's kick out. Breaks down to Barry Brennan. Challenge by Killian Brennan. But it's lost and Kildare of it back once again to Johnny Doyle. Nicely threaded forward by Ronan Sweeney. Picked up here by Tyke Fennan. Kicking. Well, it was a... An instantaneous action on the part of Tyke Fennan, but he's kicked it wide, and that's 14 wides for Kildare. Can you seriously win a championship kicking 14 wides? That was a great block down. 
but that's far too many and we're only midway through the second half two goals between the teams touchdown well that time by Noel Garvin and there's always somebody anticipating Torek Clancy sending it into the corner here once again they look to Ian Fitzgerald taking on Brian Lacey Ooh, dangerously across the face of goal, but not enough to trouble Ender Murphy. Three points from the first half for Fitzgerald. Is he to have the pleasure and the distinction of leading Leash to a Leinster victory for the first time in 57 years? Great catch by Noel Garvin, linking up well. That's Tom Kelly, away to Darren Rooney. Suddenly, Leash have taken back control of the game. Colin Parkinson colourful character, Kelly letting it run on and fisting it over this is a winning look from the Midlanders from Leash Kelly with his second, the fans are celebrating but there's still a long way to go but seven points separating the teams it's the real Not. inspirational ones Jerry. you know that this is a second point and again Ger, the open hand we have to say, they're free that is a free out they're getting away with it, that's the second time it's happened. It was the first point of the match as well, I seem to remember. Here comes Johnny Doyle. Bounces inside here. Kildare looking for something. Joe Higgins deemed to have fouled Tyke Fennon. Free in, 13 metres out. Will they just be anxious to tap it over quickly, get on with the match and try and get some more possession? It's a huge task that Kildare have now handed themselves by the concession of those two second-half goals and by the wretched start they made to the match. Johnny Doyle. Easy one for him, up and over. So now back to a two-goal gap once again. Let's take a look at this once again, this point that you question, Kevin. Yeah, you get the head-on shot now here. Just watch the open hands. Yeah. Uh, that's a free out. Camera catches it perfectly. You caught it before that. Byron straight down the centre towards Clancy again. They're all 1 2, but it's Colin Parkinson's come to forage this time. Intended for Clancy, picked up by Mick Wright. Good vigilance by Wright to play it away here to Ronan Sweeney. It's the player down on the deck. That's Mick Lawler. Play, conti play continues. Patrick Murray knocking it ahead invitingly for Tyke Fennin. Bit of work to do still. Aimed inside, inside towards Brennan, the substitute. That's Porrick Brennan on the turn, and he hits it sweetly and over. Sympathetic applause for the substitute from Sarsfields. His first point since coming on. But anxious to make a major contribution. There's only five in it. The referee talking to Michael Collins, the linesman on this near side for the second half now, as we watch that in reprise. Michael Collins may have caught a glimpse of what happened when we saw Michael Lawler go down injured. But Collins, a former all Ireland final referee himself. This is what it's for, we believe. Oh, that's uh, Mick Wright. And let's just see what's going to happen. We'll have another little look around and see what the referee is going to decide. Yeah, if he catches him here, Joe, he's already been he's already he's already been booked, so he is in huge trouble now, I'm afraid. Mick Wright's been called aside. He's had a yellow already. It's a second one. That's red. 13 players now left on the field for Kildare. 17 and a half minutes into the second half, a third red. This time it's two yellows. Let's have a look at this all over again here. He was holding off Mick Lawler, perhaps raising the arm there, and the referee, having had the attention called by linesman Michael Collins, decided two yellows and he's off. It, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a terrible uh, challenge. No, you know, it certainly it was, wasn't. Uh, relatively innocent, I would have thought. But the problem, Jerry, is the early yellows in the matches. They put the pressure on the player. He's got to be so careful. 
Well, we can't blame the referees for giving the early yellows. If the foul has occurred, it's occurred, but it's what happens after that, and the players are aware of it. Absolutely, and, and that's the problem with it. And, of course, the attackers know this, and they're willing to go in uh, and bring the ball into you closer to see can they draw that foul. In a sport that you know also very well, as part from Gaelic football, obviously, where you're a real expert, it's basketball, and your family's steeped in it. A lot of players in basketball draw fouls when guys are on four fouls. Well, that's, that's the way the game has gone now since we've gone to the tick, the yellow and the red, I'm afraid. Fergal Byron kicking this one from the 20-metre line. And uh, the referee has gone across this time for another little bit of a chat with the other linesman over there. And the linesmen have been certainly keeping the referee informed as to what's happening. Now making his way up along to have a word with somebody else, as the referee has just warned, has warned uh, no carbon there and given him a little ticking. Stuart Mackenzie Smith is going off and coming on is going to be Eamon Callaghan. So Callaghan on, Mackenzie Smith off. He made a very fine contribution to the match, and I think he will wonder himself what more had he to do. He wasn't getting exa exactly great ball up there in the second half, but he's off. Perhaps it's a tactical switch of some kind because Kildare appreciate they're down a man. It's all set up for Leash to win this title, has been for a long time. David Lyons in trouble there. And the less said about that one, the better by Barry Brennan. There's a nice bit of perspex up there, Jaron, I was certainly in danger from that shot. <laughs> 15 minutes to go in the game, including some stoppage tight, I'm sure. And now it's a case of uh, Leash football battening down the hatches. They have a five-point lead, but up against a very game Kildare team, but they're down to 13, 13 against 14. Dramatic stuff at Croke Park. McLaurin coming in, and the referee says you reached in unfairly. Many of the fans for Leash shaking their heads, saying, don't agree with that. Referee wouldn't have expected them to. Free kick taken quickly by Patrick Murray. Killian Brennan taking over here is Glenn Ryan. He'll give the leadership inside to Ronan Sweeney. Doing a little solo. Back it goes towards Glenn Ryan again. And it's over the bar. Giving the leadership Glenn. He's had his troubles with injury. Doesn't score an awful lot, but now he's put just four between them. And with this latest point for Kildare, their fight by back is still very much on. And a great deal of uncertainty may enter the leash play, the closer Kildare can get. Well, it's looked good for them, they haven't done it as a team. Whereas many of the Kildare players have Leinster medals at home, including Glenn Ryan, played in the final last year. Patrick Murray. One man down, that's Fennan exposing the backs. Higgins is back there, trying to prevent it from going by. Keeping it on the deck. Getting some assistance there from Darren Rooney. Again, some good movement out of defence here towards Porrick Clancy. Three against three. Fisted back down by Brian Lacey, holding firm back there, Andrew McLaugh but McLaughlin, it's, yes it is McLaughlin. Nice little turn around here, David Lyons. Oh, very unkind bounce, all the way through towards Brennan once again. Boric Brennan bottled up and the referee has blown the whistle, infuriated the leash backs who felt but the number 22 had held on too long. The backs were trying to be disciplined, trying to stay back, hoping that the forward would be a judge to have overheld. They say it's a free out, but the referee's in charge. Well, Ger Ger last week I had a great discussion about this particular facet with Jerry McDermott, who is insisting that, you know, this is within the rules as long as you stay on your feet and don't do anything that goes close to dangerous or foul play. I have to say he was lucky to get that one. Very lucky. It's Patrick Murray with a fourth. It means there are only three between them. Those of you from Kildare who lost the fate a little while ago, hang on there. Just watch it again here. And Higgins indeed did bring the man down at that stage, but play did continue. 
And we don't know at what stage the referee's whistle sounded. We couldn't hear it. Torek Clancy has got a free kick for Leash. The neighbours having this battle here in Dublin. And Kildare saying, come on, play the ball, get on with the match. 23 and a half minutes of the second half gone. Glenn Ryan into the action since midway through the first half. It was a Kildare team forced to start without Anthony Rainbow. We knew that Dermot Early wasn't playing. Carol Ennis didn't start as well through injury. Alan Barry was sent off, then Kevin Fitzpatrick was sent off. And in the second half, Mick Wright has been sent off. 14 against 13. Three between them. Leash leading. Kildare with possession back. Glenn Ryan once again. Into space, a lot of gaps now appearing. It's won well by Ronald Sweeney, taking it over the head of Joe Higgins. Back towards Sweeney again, they need another point here. Their support with Fennin coming through. Stopped by Clancy, runs through again. An opportunity for Murray, and it's going to be a penalty. A penalty for Kildare. Patrick Murray was taken down after a sweeping movement from one end of the field to the other. The number 10 rises to his feet. The crowd rise to their feet in support of a game Kildare team who were carrying it right to leash at this stage. And it's a fascinating Leinster final. Well, Ger, what you got to say, regardless of whether they score or they score, the comeback by Kildare again, Colin mentioned it at halftime in the analysis. It's fantastic. They're still at it. They're still breathing. It's coming to equaliser. Now the pressure is on the taker. We know how difficult it is to convert a penalty in soccer, but this is on the 13-metre line. The goal is smaller, not as high. It's Fergal Byron against Ronan Sweeney. And will the goalie stay on his line this time, there? He's only once ever scored a goal in Championship football against Offaly last year in his 18th Championship match. This to tie up the game. 25 and a half minutes into the second half. About 10 to go. Sweeney leveling it up he's got it absolutely roofed it the teams are level for the first time in the 116 Leinster football final Kildare won 12 Leash 2-9 it's a fascinating contest the goalkeeper tipped it up onto the underside of the bar and it came down over the line Who's got the resolve, the commitment of the composer now to lift the title? Donald Miller is coming into the Leash team. Ready to join the fray, the number 21. And the player going off is Mick Lawler. Tends to be subbed in matches nowadays. He's given his all. Mick O'Dwyer tries to freshen up the charge. They were looking like title winners. It's anybody's game. Great contest. Killian Brennan rising for it, taking it back there, the commanding figure of the substitute, Eamon Callaghan from Nace. Belted into space, now the pressure is on Colin Byrne and his fellow defenders. Byrne reacts smartly, gets it out to Tom Kelly, takes a return. Colin Parkinson, businesslike. Go away from uh, Killian Brennan that time, sent inside towards Ian Fitzgerald, and now all of a sudden it's Kildare who look like they've got the extra man. 13 against 14. Killian Brennan. Great football being played by Kildare. It's measured and assured. Good backup support play. Hendy sending it away. Once again, it's John Doyle out wide on the right hand side. Back in towards Hendy once more. Back towards Porrick Brennan. He's already scored in this match. Tyke Fennan amazingly hasn't. He might put that right now. No, it's gone agonizingly to the right. A lot of wides for Kildare, that is a total of 15. But Torek Nolan can be very pleased with his charges. They've shown character and loads of football. His side have had the chances. They may yet win it. It's fascinating. Tom Kelly outside here to Torek Clancy. People were expecting a spirited contest for the Leinster title. They're getting it. Russ Monolly, who got the second goal, still Monolly towards Parkinson, a hit and hope one Leash there in numbers, taken down here by the substitute to another sub this is Barry Brennan 
Kaplan in on the end line. Does he know where he's going? Back towards Parkinson. Kildare with a man on the ground there. Full back. Lyons. Still the pressure on. That Kildare defence spills back out here towards Bino McDonald. Back towards Paul Clancy and he's kept it well. Surely it over the bar. His first point. Nisha back in front. Great entertainment. Fascinating final. Seven oh. minutes to go. Reminiscent of the uh, last match where he got the big, the big point. And the right man has it. Bino a little tip into Clancy. Terrific score. Just what Leash were looking for. That might settle down a few nerves. And the referee there showing a yellow card. Yeah, that was for a nearly That's incident there Ryan. when uh, one of the Leafs players was trying to join the upper up and he just pulled him out of the way. Uh, I think it was Parkinson at the time, actually. Andrew McLaughlin being attended to. So after the great comeback by Kildare, they find themselves a point down. 13 points for Kildare. Or rather, let's get it right, it's 15 points for Kildare, 16 points for Leash. And the real score, 210 to 112. Over five minutes to play. Kildare come again with Johnny Doyle. This should favour the back and does. Fennelly out there first time. Borick Clancy whipping it away down towards Ian Fitzgerald. Challenging is Lacey, winning it back there, Andrew McLaughlin. Into the clear to Johnny McDonald, who's forage gamely. Outside towards Damien Hendy, a chance to carry now. The team under strength. Outside to Killian Brennan, nice and calm. They want to pick out a right moment for a good shot to try and tie it again. Back towards John Doyle. Is this on target? They look at it. It's over. Level once again. Level for the second time in the Bank of Ireland Leinster football final. Great final. 113 to 210. A great idea now at this stage, Jeremy. If it ended up a draw, cancel out those red cards and we'll go at it again next week. Well, one of them was uh, a straight red, as we know. Here comes Glenn Ryan. Is there to be a winner? Here comes Patrick Murray. In fact, it's not Patrick Murray, it's the substitute Porrick Brennan. Inside here towards Johnny Doyle. Set forward here. This is Callahan. Broken down again. This is Patrick Murray. And the shot is wandering in the breeze and sailing just to the left. Has to be disappointed, but he was the man who scored four points in the game and was pulled down for the penalty, which was converted by Ronan Sweeney, which began the comeback for Kildare. Oh, Killian Brennan lets a spill from his grasp, seized on by Andrew McLaughlin. McLaughlin continues his run there, helped out by Hendy. The challenge coming in there. And the substitute, Donald Miller, deemed to have committed the foul. Johnny Doyle for a Kildare side who have never led in this final. And they won't do so on this particular occasion. It comes out to Parkinson. The fans willing their teams on. This is Brian Bino McDonald brought down. Free kick. Player is exhausted. The effort put in by all of these players, immense. Great credit due to all concerned. You can take a look at this challenge once again here. And players just falling around the place, sheer exhaustion. There will be an extra three extra minutes to be played. So that is going to mean six minutes of play still to take place. That is Russ Monnelly down there, and it's going to be thrown in. And very slowly, the injured David Lyons from that last clash there, making his way back towards the full back line. So, Russ, so this is uh, Peter McDonald outside towards Parkinson. He's missed it. It's a bad one. Explaining it all the way to his colleagues and to those on the sideline, like Mick O'Dwyer. Mick wanted the ball played inside. There was a loose leash there. 210 for Leash. That's 16 points. Kildare, 113. 16 points.
Well, they're bringing on another substitute, and it looks to be Niall Brown. It's one of those A and others. They left a whole rake of them at the end of their substitute list. That will have to be double-checked. Andrew McLaughlin is the player anyway, coming off. Well, I think it may well be a switch of numbers. I think that might be Ronan Quinn who came in there. We'll try and double-check that. This is Glenn Ryan. Oh, it spills away, and David Lyons up from the back, challenged by the other number three, who is Colin Byrne. Scoring opportunity, carries oh, it to the other, He's given it the other way. His jersey was being pulled, you know. It surely was. David Lyons uh, got a, at least two tugs of the jersey there. The free kick has reached for a Clancy. A minute to go of normal time, four still to play. Remember the three extra minutes. 16 points each in points. Tom Kelly, is there to be a winner? Will it be the sub who might get it? It could well be Dan Miller. That might be the name they're talking about from Ananok. Donald Miller has come in here. A vital kick at a vital time. And he's edged Leash in front again. And another change being made by Kildare. Ken Donnelly has come in for Tyg Fennin. It wasn't Tyg Fennin's day. Hasn't been Kildare's day so far, but you have to give them great, great credit. And that is Kildare's fifth sub used. So it's all or nothing now, and Leash have a one-point lead. We're almost into the extra time, the three minutes of added time. Kildare to get the ball back downfield. They're looking composed. Three minutes of added time now to play. Only one between them, 17 points to 16. Leash looking to win the cup for the first time since 1946. Kildare looking today for their 14th Leinster title. Right now, I think they'd be happy just to get a replay. Ronan Sweeney had it, he was bundled, and the referee says... Oh, he played for that one, Jerry. Oh, he surely in the did. Replay for sure. And Colin Byrne being told by his colleagues, just cool it, take it easy. The decisions made, Boric Clancy operating as peacemaker. But it now means that Patrick Murray, who kicks with the left, who's got four points so far in the game. Three of them certainly from freeze, I think one from play. This to tie it. It's off the post. Leach still lead by a point, and Joe Higgins has gathered. There's two minutes to play of the added time. It's out to Parkinson. What a dramatic game. What a finale. It's out to Barry Brennan. <laughs> Away into the corner, kicked down towards the man who might take the cup yet. Ian Fitzgerald, the breeze is carrying it, and it's carried it over. Leach are leading again by two. Ian Fitzgerald's fourth point. It puts a little bit of leeway between the teams at 2.12 to 1.13. 18 points to 16. It means Kildare have got to get a goal. First of all, they've got to get the ball back. Just over a minute to play. Barry Brennan in for Parkinson. Second half sub. Brennan likewise. And it's on target. And they're three points in front. to take the title. Stephen Kelly is joining the fray. There's a goal in it, 2.13 to 1.13. A great Leinster final. Ross Mundy is on his way off, Chair. And one of the goal scorers, there he is. Stephen Kelly getting possession straight away. Kildare have set up 32 chances in this match to just 29 for Leash. Not much between them, but Kildare's effort reflected in that stat. But they're three points behind those crucial second half goals. A bad start to the first half for the Lily Whites, a bad start to the second, and Glenn Ryan now with his side having only about 15 seconds to rescue their chance of winning Leinster. For 2003, Johnny Doyle and his colleagues have got to work it in for a goal. Otherwise, the attack is in vain. And the referee says, play on to the Leash players. Paulie Clancy was back there, Joe Higgins has it. The Leash fans urging the referee to blow for dear life. But 
Kildare get it back. And once again, it's with Damien Hendy setting it up with Brian Lacey, the ex kick man. Played in the 98 final, runs onto Glenn Ryan. They're going for the goal. It's Patrick Murray. Murray shooting! Wide. He's put it wide. Oh, Jerry, you really have to admire the effort they're putting in to try and level this game. It's incredible. It's, it's all over. over. At least are the champions. This is it again, and that's how near Kildare came to rescuing the tie and taking it to a replay. It's not to be. Leash who won in 1889, won in 1936, 1937, 1938, and then in 1946. And they are champions again of Leinster in 2003. They have won it with a dramatic finish here. But credit Kildare, game to the end, spirited team, a team of class. And they are into the qualifiers to face Roscommon in six days' time. Leash are through to the quarterfinals. They have won the Leinster Cup for the first time in 57 years. Only a goal in it. They don't care if it's just a point. A fantastic day out for the fans of Leash and Kildare. And how Leash will enjoy going back through Kildare tonight. The fans will enjoy the victory by 2.13 to 1.13. It was some match. Well, we were hearing that the presentation might be in the stands. It's out in the middle. Mick O'Dwyer is delighted. I'm sure he's talking to Marty. Mick O'Dwyer, you've uh, sprinkled your magic all the way down the Naistool carriageway down to Port Leash and around County Leash. What a day for Leash and for Mick Well, I suppose it was a great day for Leash, but it was certainly a good day also for Kildare. It was a marvellous game of football. And, you know, Kildare, like true footballing team that they are, they battled to the very last. And Paddy Murray went very near and putting it in the net on the finish. So, I mean, it was a great competitive game of football. I'm delighted to have been involved in the game. But, of course, from a Leash point of view, I think they deserve this victory. 1946 is they won their last one. What a day for the people of Leash. There were times, I'm sure, that you were worried all the way through. And the sending offs, of course, losing Kevin Fitzpatrick was a big blow. Yeah, because Kevin Fitzpatrick, he has been one of our best defenders all year, as you know. And when he went, I think there was a little gap in defence then, and Kildare really came into the game. But as I said, it was a marvellous game of football. And uh, I've no doubt Kildare will go through in the, in the backdoor system as well. My wish is with Kildare, and I hope they will succeed in the backdoor, because they are a good footballing side. Talk to me about Leash. What is this going to mean? Because when Mick O'Dwyer came, there was so much expected of you. You've delivered yet again. For the first time, Leash was celebrating 57 years. Well, I suppose there was good footballers there all the time, you know, that if you're good minor teams, it was just a matter of getting the discipline right and getting all that set up right. And overall, I suppose, we got it right today, and today was the day to get it right, and I'm thrilled and delighted for Leash to win. Well, you're a saint in Kildare. You're going to be canonised in Leash now. I think they're gone mad down here on the sideline. <laughs> Mick O'Dwyer, what a performance, what a record by the maestro himself. Winter of Mike Meheran, Agus Dina Galeer, Olish Agus Ufalia, Bawalam Buikas of Bawal, Dundair, Don Clehaon, Taka Dimashi, the Park and Crokey, and Tran Olisha. Hobron the Kildaran, Dimashi, Anna Waher Fad, Agus Kok Arthas to Leash, Don La Brad Hanyu. On behalf of Cora Lyon, I want to congratulate both teams on a truly magnificent performance. I want to thank the players for, for putting so much into that game for all our enjoyment. Bawalam Buikas, Dubwag the Heron, August the Reator, Seamus McCormack, August the Dina, Avia Kaurlesh. On a special occasion like this, I have to do something that's perhaps not done very often. In Cornelion, our chief executive is a leash man, and our less coherent is a leash man. And I think it is only right and proper on this day for leash that I should ask both of those on pardon of runner campaign leash in Fister. Well, the, the 80s. It'll be nothing to the like this.
this because this is the day that Leash have regained the Leicester Championship and Ian Fitzgerald, the captain, leads Leash in victory. What an occasion for Ian, a very, very pleasant man and a great captain, a wonderful footballer. I want to thank our great supporters. They've come out but they've come out this year unbelievable. Thank you. I want to thank Kildare for a great game. Fair play to them, unbelievable. Thank you. I want to thank our backroom team, Ollie Byrne, Joe Dwyer, our Masseurs, uh, Francis Daly, Aidan McFall, and our team doctor, Dr. Aidan Hansen. Thank you. Sorry. I want to thank the women and men from Port Arlington GA Club for giving us dinner all through winter. Thank you. I want to thank our sponsors, uh, QK Meats and Azori. Thanks very much. Thanks very much to our great selectors. Uh, Declan and Alton came in this year, he's been brilliant. Thanks, Declan. I want to thank Gabriel Lawler, our other selector. He's been with us since we were kids, and this day is as much his as it is ours. I want to thank our girlfriends, our wives, and our families for sticking with us all through all these years. Today is your day as well. And of course, the great man himself, the great, great Big One Warren. Ian Fitzgerald then taking the trophy.